It's so stupid, it's positively brilliant. Yep, Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Uh, thank you for tuning in to another week, another quarantined week, or at least quarantined for me. Um, Andrew, been back out there in them streets. In them streets, bro. I'll be joining you soon. All right, what, what, what we on? Phase two in New York, I think. I don't know what phase it is. To be honest, I was out in L.A. Obviously, uh, doing Rogan, but I went up to Rogan S- SB to be with my girl uh, and her family, and I went out to a restaurant, bro. I went to two restaurants. Really? Yeah. You're living life on the edge, edge, bruh. I'm bug wow. chasing. How was it? Honestly, it was great. It just it was nice to see people being normal. You know, like people sitting down, having some food, having conversation. Like, yeah, the waiter still comes up to you with a face mask on, but it's just nice. It was like, it's nice to see people living life as we usually live it again. It was well, just, we're, yeah. well, we're not. Uh, this is like that exhibit video. I don't know if you remember that video. What you see is what you get. When exhibit was just walking through his neighborhood, acting like everything was normal, uh-huh. there was all types of wild shit going on behind him. Shit was blowing up. People was getting shot. Uh-huh. Helicopters were crashing. That's where we're at right now uh, we yes. can act like we can act like it's normal but it's not normal yeah i guess i would say that like i would say like this is part of our normal in america this is not a new thing like the fight for our civil rights is not a new thing that's you know been part of the american existence you yeah, know yeah, and it's yeah. a, a failure of the american existence but it's it's something we're trying to perfect and poverty uh, poverty is definitely not a new thing poverty is not a new thing 100% you know, I don't know how we get rid of all poverty. Maybe we just make life better for the poor. But in order to have rich people, there has to be poor people. We not could, really. Not, you don't have to be poor. You can still have rich people. Matter of fact, the rich will actually get richer if more people have money. There got to be poor people somewhere in order for capitalism to function. And like the kind of. What do you call poor though? Like relative, poor? relative poor, right? So it's like the genius thing I think that, well, I don't know if it's genius or nefarious, but like that America did is like. They're like, all right, bet. Instead of exploiting American workers, we'll exploit Chinese ones because it's way cheaper over there. Or we'll exploit labor over there. And like, because capitalism needs a, somebody to exploit, there's no way that you can get the type of wealth that you want by paying somebody what they're worth. Yeah, but I don't think that a person has to be poor, though. Right. Like, we I, could, but I guess I'm saying like poor in comparison. I think, I think everybody can have a livable wage. I think America has enough resources to where every body can have a livable wage. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like we can make life better for the poor. Like, and maybe don't even yeah. call them poor. Maybe call them, I don't know, <laughs> humans. Yeah, like uh, wealth, humans that can pay their rent. <laughs> wealthily, pay wealthily their- challenged or something like that. Yeah. You know I mean? <laughs> so, Finan- financially challenged. Financially nah, challenged. But you no, know, I get it. I get it. You know, it's always going to be a class system. That I know. Yes. That I know. And that's not necessarily wrong as long as you're not mistreating people because they're not as wealthy. Like, it's okay that people have way more money than me, and it's okay that people have way less money than me as long as those people with way less aren't dying because of it. As long as they're comfortably living and they have the opportunity to get the same amount as me and more, as long as they have that same opportunity and they're okay at the lower end, I'm cool with that society. I think it's like a video game, right? Um, America has created this capitalist free free enterprise system that if you have the opportunity, if you have the resources, you can create something that can financially set you up for life, right? Yep. But what what America also did was systemically cut people off from those resources and from that opportunity. So therefore, what about them? What about those have nots? Right. You know what I mean? Like we have to provide resources and opportunity for them to be able to compete yeah and by the way the best ideas come from come from the bottom yeah best ideas i think come from the bottom you know what yep. i'm saying so yeah it's just that's all we just got to create a we got to create a class system where everybody can compete that's why i'm all for the livable wage i'm for i'm for i've been thinking a lot about universal basic income you know universal health care i think giving people a thousand dollars a month isn't a bad thing you give everybody $1,000 a month, it's equivalent to giving nobody anything. Depends. Just don't let inflation happen. Well, how do you do that? I don't when know. When you're printing money. Inflation happens when you print money, man. 
I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe don't let inflation happen in certain places. For example, like the, the, the cities where there's the poor and disenfranchised. You know what I'm saying? In these cities that have, in these cities that literally, you know, the engine of these cities are the have nots. Right. Keep things the way that they are. It would be tough to restrict interstate commerce that would create that inflation, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, like, but but can't you put ta- can't you put can't you uh, put laws on these companies and these corporations not to do inflation though? Well, don't they do that during hurricanes and shit like that when it's a, a natural disaster and these people try to spike things up? Yeah, but that's a little different than inflation. You're talking about price gouging, and that's illegal. Like okay. when everybody needs toilet paper. All of a sudden, you know, toilet paper costs twice as much. That's illegal, right? Take well, don't advantage. do that. No price gouge. Yeah, 100%. That's already illegal. Can't do it. But inflation is really a function of how much money is in the economy versus how many goods are in the economy. And when you have okay. more money than there are things to buy, it's a bad look. You'll never have... Listen, America... Well, I, I think we talked about this a couple of weeks ago. America will never run out of things to buy. Bro, <laughs> somebody got rich off the Chia Pet right. in America. Right. You have to think about these type of things. Right. Think about the type of things people buy here. Yeah. They will buy bullshit. Yeah. Man, there, there is no better place to sell bullshit than America. Why do you think people come here? Because they want to buy bullshit? They, no, they come here to sell bullshit. Ah. Like, oh, they selling, yo, you can, they selling bullshit in America. You can get rich selling bullshit. Yeah. Let's go to America. Yeah. And they come up with crazy ass ideas and crazy ass Americans buy them. Yeah. Like, what's the last bullshit? What was the last really bullshit idea America was craving? Not the Popeye's chicken sandwich. That, that, that we joke. bought? What's the last thing that everybody's like, I need that? What was the last thing everybody wanted? Oh, Couldn't no. resist. I can't remember right now. It'll come to me later. A tickle but, Me fucking, Elmo or some shit? Tick, tick, tickle Me Elmo. I don't Are know. Are you frozen? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I just stayed there. <laughs> I just, what happened? Listen. Listen, let's get, let's get into some positively brilliant and what a fucking idiot, man. What did you see this week that was positively brilliant? Huh, that was positively brilliant. Oh, you know what I saw that was positively brilliant? What the Democratic senators did with the kente cloth and taking a knee. Get the fuck out of here. Nah, dead ass. Why was that brilliant? Because they out-trumped Trump. No, they didn't. They did. I think they actually pissed their base off. They said we all we don't like Democrats to pander. That white conda shit they pulled, yeah, with fucking Nancy Pelosi yep. and Chuck Schumer and all yep. of them. It's like I don't care about that. I care about policies and legislation. Yes, that's true. That's what I care about. That's true. But the reason Trump is president is because he found a way to dominate the conversation. In the same way Takashi 69 is a famous rapper, he found a way to dominate the conversation, right? They understand the value of attention. And for a whole few days, everybody was memeing and focusing solely on that picture. So yeah, they knew it was pandering. Yeah, they knew it was stupid. But they knew for two or three days, they could take all the attention away from Trump. And with Trump doesn't have attention, he has no power. That motherfucker is like, attention is like the sun for him. That gives him all his power. So they took that shit away from him. And if they can continue doing it with goofy ass antics like that, you're good to go. The Democrat supporters ah, hate bro. Trump so much, they're not going to vote for him no matter what the Democrats do. But what they did was savvy. Policy, bro. It was savvy marketing. Trump used to back his shit up with policy. Even if it was the most simple shit like build the wall. Yeah. Or the Mexicans are taking jobs from you. Yeah. So we got to we gotta fucking get them out of the country. He, he still had some messaging in it. What policy like they, they, does the Democrats have? Like, what po- what are their policies? What they, what they, what they, what they, today, uh, that day, they had uh, released the um, Justice in Policing Act. And what is banned, that? It, 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 I mean, it's a lot of stuff in it, but uh, some of the main things was it banned chokeholds that killed... Um, Eric Garner? Not Eric Garner, uh, Floyd. George Floyd. George Floyd, George Floyd, I'm yeah. sorry. Um, it stopped no, no knock drug entry. That's how Breonna Taylor got killed. So, I mean, it has it, it was a good it was a good law. It's a good comprehensive police reform bill Yo. that they, they were not that they that they're trying to get passed. But the Senate's probably going to block it. The more I read about this Breonna Taylor story. The more absolutely ridiculous it is that there has not been any arrests made about this. It makes no sense. This and is fact, crazy. It makes no sense. It makes no sense. And I, I'll put them in the what a fucking idiot category. First of all, you 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 raid the wrong house. Right. Right. The person that they were looking for already was in jail. Yeah. Right? But 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 they give you the warrant for the wrong house. Then you raid the house. 
Oh, they gave you a warrant. They gave them a warrant for the wrong house. I didn't read that. Yes. So they they did go to the house that they thought they were supposed to go to. No, it went to the wrong house. But did they go to the house that was on the warrant? No. Oh, okay. So they went to the wrong house. Yeah, they went to the wrong house. Fucking idiots. They 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 kicked the door in. Boyfriend does what he's supposed to do. You sitting in your house in the middle of the night. You hear somebody kick the door in. You grab your motherfucking hammer. Start right. blasting, right? He got arrested. His charges got dropped. I think his charges got dropped. Yeah, I'm pretty sure his did. charges got dropped. And Breonna Taylor is dead. And when you look at the police report, they basically tried to cover the whole shit up. Yeah, they didn't they say that the body didn't get to the hospital or something like that? Yep. yep. Son, this is crazy. Hey, man, this one there. is the craziest. And this is the difference when you got a video. When you got a video, it makes it real. When there's no video, it's hearsay. I said the same thing. What'd you like, say? I said the exact same thing. I said the exact same thing you said. I said the, the, the reason Breonna Taylor is not getting the attention that uh, she should get is because there's no video. Like on Matt Aubrey, there was a video. Um, you know, George Floyd, there was a video. Mm. With, with Breonna Taylor, there's no video. It's just hearsay. So you don't see how bad it is. You hear the 911 call. But if we actually saw the police kicking the door in, in the wrong house and then just lighting that place up, Yo, it, it'd be a total type of outrage. Where are all the animators at? Animate these fucking killings, bro. Animate these killings. Give all give all the details in the animation and show what's going on. And people will pass that shit around, dude. I bet they really will. You have all the information. You have what transpired before and you have what transpired after and how fucked up it is, how they try to cover it up. Yeah, but then people will just say, oh, they're exaggerating. You know what I mean? Good. Let them say it. Let them say they're exactly. At least people will know the full details of what went on. I think most people just hear Breonna Taylor and they're like, oh, another person that got shot by the police. They don't know the full extent to what went down and the cover up efforts made to. I mean, it's unbelievable. And what you what you said is true, right? Like details matter. The reason, you know, George Floyd is hitting the way that it's hitting to a lot of people is because they sat there and they watched eight minutes and 46 seconds Mm -hmm. of a man who had his hands in his pockets, Mm. officer on his neck. Two other officers on him. People telling him to get off. Clearly not resisting. Yep. Calling out for his mom. Like it was just like y'all. Y'all really murdered that man. So you saw just the just blatant disregard for human life. If you saw that in the Breonna Taylor case, and you knew that they just ran up in there, you can't say my bad on some shit like. That. Yep. That's not a my bad. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's that's not a uh. You know, at first you don't succeed. Dust yourself off and try again. Yeah. That's not what that was. Yeah. You run up in the wrong house. Kill somebody that doesn't deserve to be dead, and then you just go live your life like it's golden. You get administrative leave. Fuck. Nah, that. b. Nah, nah. Fuck all that. Yeah. Fuck all that. What's your whole take on um, uh, defund the police? Maybe we should get into that. Talk about that. Explain that. Um, I think it's uh, I don't want to say positively brilliant because it's not positively brilliant. If it was positively brilliant, messaging matters, and and messaging. Every word has to count. So when people hear defund the police, they think defund the police, take all the money out of the police department. I don't know why some people thought, you know, about, I don't know why they was even talking about disbanding and abolishing because that never crossed my mind. When I, when I heard defund the police, I was like, okay, take all the money from the police officers. But when you read what defund the police means is they want to take money out of these bloated police budgets. Mm. And put them into communities that need them, mm. which 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 makes absolute sense. Because why does New York City have a six billion dollar police budget? Take a couple of those billion and put them into the hoods in the city that need them. Put them into the schools. Yeah, get people better housing. Create dro- job training programs. Create motherfucking STEM programs. You know, uh, get put more money in social services so people can have better mental health health services at at their disposal. Like once you do that. Then what happens is the hood has opportunities now. They say that um, crime is a result of relative poverty, yes. not just poverty. Yes. Yes. Right? Okay, hair coming in. I see you. I mean, I see you. Stephen A. Sharla. Let's go. Yo, hey, hey, as soon as I said, you see me, Siri goes, what can I help you with? A haircut, Siri. That's what the fuck you can <laughs> That hairline, bro. <laughs> but, um... Uh, where was I? Uh, poverty said poverty in, in cities. Oh yeah, it's like a po- poverty is down. Um, it's a function of relative po- poverty. It's like a crime is a function of relative poverty. That's what they they say. Where it's like yeah. there's a lot of crime in places where there's poor people living right next to really rich people. But if everybody's poor, there's not that much crime because it's like, well, yeah, that's just life, right? Yes. So, um, so I guess what they're saying is, 
is take some of that money and invest it in things that would reduce the poverty if the poverty is a thing that causes the crime. So it's so fucking simple. State jobs, other things, other opportunities that people can do, not just simply giving people money to put in their pockets, but giving them places they could potentially work. You fix the schools up, better right. education. You fix the housing up. People got a better place to live. So they're waking up and they're feeling better about their life. Right. Put the money in the social services so you can have mental health care for these people in the hood. Job training programs, teach people how to work, trade school, yep. STEM. Prepare them for the 21st century. What the fuck? So I will say this. Calling it defunding the police is quite possibly the worst marketing ever done in the history of humankind. Because it's bad. It's bad. when I hear the word detach, I don't think detach your arm. I don't think take a little piece of your arm and then put it somewhere else. I think take the whole arm, right? If I'm yeah. going to get a detox, I'm going to get all the toxins taken out of my body. Anytime the preface D is before a word, right? It's take everything that comes after it. Like so this dick, there we go. <laughs> take this ick, <laughs> all right? <laughs> so, so it's like, of course people are gonna naturally have this reaction where they go, fuck that, we can't have this, etc. If they said reallocate the police, I'd be like, okay, talk to me. Because apparently what they're also th thinking of doing is doing things that police have been asking for. There's this sheriff in like Houston or like a uh, police commissioner. And I think it was Houston. I forget the exact city. But he basically was like, why are police being called if there's a cat in a tree? Why are police being called if somebody is uh, mentally ill? Why are police being called if an animal escapes from the zoo? That's not our job. You have to let us focus on the things that we're doing and then and stop putting everything under the police belt because you don't want to fund these other organizations. So if true. even the police agree with that shit, then let's I go. Agree. I agree, especially when you can't even get police officers to do wellness checks on people that you think may be suffering from some type of mental illness. You know what I'm saying? They'll tell mm -hmm. you dumb shit like, well, if she hasn't hurt herself or he hasn't hurt herself uh, or hurt somebody, you can't do no wellness checks. Get the fuck out of here. You know right. what I mean? Like, you, you got to wait till it's too late. So, yeah, I agree with you. I think they should have called it Remix the Police. I like talking, it. <laughs> you got to talk in these kids' language. I man. like that. You know what I'm saying? And then you go, then that's when Joe Biden, you reach out to Diddy. You say, Diddy, I need you to do a little, <laughs> little commercial for me called Remix the Police since you invented the remix. You know what I mean? And, and that's what I, and, and honestly, that's what I would do. Like, even what Joe Biden is saying about reform, I just, first of all, let's be clear. I don't know why Democrats can't get their messaging right. I really don't. Like, I watched Joe Biden fumble that the fund the police question so bad. What he said? Well, they asked him, does he believe in defunding the police? He said no. And then he talked about, you know, he has this plan where he wants to put $300 million uh, into, into policing to help reform policing and, and help community policing. And I'm like, you got to really think about how the American people, American people are in the streets right now protesting against police brutality, mm -hmm. right? So if they think defund the police is a good idea, because they're the ones out there championing, defund the police, defund the police, defund the police, you have to know how to answer that question better. Mm. Trump fucking set them up. Because mm. Trump and them went out there and said they wanted to fund the police, and then that's what they said afterwards. They want to abolish the police. They want to get rid of the police. That's not, it's not the same thing. Mm. They put they put defund, abolish, and get rid of all in one, one sentence. And if, mm. and, if, and if fucked the Democrats up. So now they were playing defense when they could have just been on offense. Right. Senator, Kam Senator Kamala Harris bodied it on the view. What she said. Taylor, play this clip if you can, but Meghan McCain asked her does she believe in defunding the police. Senator Harris didn't say yes or no. She said, I think that we should absolutely allocate resources for the communities that need them. We should take, we should take money from, from, from these budgets and put them in communities that need them. And then she started just naming things that the hood needs. Megan McCain was slick enough to go, well, yeah, of course, but do, do you believe in defunding the police? Senator Harris says, what do you mean by defunding the police? Uh, like, what do, you, what, 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 do you, what do you mean by right. defunding the police? Everybody you know got why? different definition. Everybody got their own definition. Words don't fucking matter. Well, they do, <laughs> they do matter. They do, but they don't. You got to be real specific with those words, bro. You got to be specific. Yo, yeah, I was yeah, thinking yeah, yeah. this past weekend, um... And I wonder, yo, I know Chris is, 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 uh, by the way, Chris is in the hospital. He's okay. It's not Corona. It's a kidney stone. But, uh, uh, and I wonder if he has some perspective on this too, but like maybe it should be illegal for police or other essential workers 
to unionize against the government or to strike against the government. Like, okay, so like, let's say, for example, me and you got a factory, right, that makes shoes, right? And then the workers want to unionize and they want to go on strike so they can get better wages, right? Me and you are personally invested in that factory and we want to make sure the factory makes money. So when we're in the negotiation with the unions, we're not going to give the, the shoe factory union that much because that's going to come out of our pocket. But if you're a government worker that's negotiating with the unions and you're going to be out of your job in two or three years anyway, you don't give a fuck how they figure that shit out in the future. You're just going to let the unions get whatever they want because you're like, I don't got any stake in this anyway. So the unions bully the government and they get all these crazy rules built in where like you get whatever your last year of work is, you get that for the rest of your life and your pension so that they back, they like super load that last year, their last year, they'll do tons of overtime. They'll do tons of extra shit. So they go, their salary goes from 100 to 150,000 that, that last year. And then they carry that pension forever as it goes on. And I think that's why these budgets are so swollen. I don't know anything about what you're talking about, but I will <laughs> say that um, I don't, I, don't I, have, I have no idea of anything you're talking about, but I, I would say I, people don't retire, bro. Who retires? Well, it's 20 and out or 25 and out. It, that's the goal in, in, that, in those jobs. You retire because you have this amazing pension. Once you do 20 or 25 years, you get 100% of, is it 100% out? Or 80% uh, or yeah, something? It's, it's like a little bit lower, but it's- A little bit lower, but it's a significant amount of money for the rest well, of your would, life. I would love to hear how often that happens. Like, I'm serious. I would love to hear how often. How often does it happen? Al, Al used to be in law enforcement. Yeah, like everybody retires. The goal is you start young, you retire, and then you get a second career. So now you have a second career and you're getting your retirement at the same time. So you get that's 80. Was, that's, go, go. No, that's what I was about to say. Like the second career. A lot of people don't ever get to that point because to retire, I always was told retirement's not an age, it's an income. I can't retire after 25 years if I can't afford to. But what we're saying is you have this thing built in, your pension, mm -hmm. right? So when you retire as a police officer after 20 or 25 years, you get paid 80%, maybe even 100% in some places, but at least like 80% yeah. of your salary, that last year's salary for the rest of your life. I'm sure it happens. I've just never seen it. I've never even seen it in movies. In movies, it's always the goddamn officer who's just about to get his pension who gets fucking killed. Remember in training day? Yeah. When but, <laughs> that's a movie, Charlamagne. <laughs> Are you saying you don't believe that police officers make it to their pension? I don't know, man. I'm trying I to understand see. what he's saying, know. bro. Like, I don't know, bro. Yeah. I need to see. I'm not saying that it don't happen. I, I need to see some recent examples. Not some shit that happened in the 60s, 70s. I need to see some motherfuckers that started in the 90s and they living good off their pension right now. You don't. So, what do you think happens to them? They just die right before. Yes. <laughs> yes if every policeman died the year before their pension, we would be having a way different protest right now, dude. Bruh, I don't know, man. I got to see it to believe it. I'm not saying it don't happen. All I'm simply saying is I have never seen it. How do you I, I believe in Sasquatch and not pensions? Well, there's pictures of Sasquatch. I ain't never seen a police officer holding up his goddamn picture. <laughs> Son, I was on Rogan and he made an argument for Sasquatch. I saw it. He's right. But I, I've said I've been saying that like a Sasquatch was just a primate. It's, it literally was a primate in the woods. And it came like, here over that land bridge or whatever from. Yeah. 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 I never I never, I, I never I never I, I never looked at Sasquatch as any like huge mystical, mythic, mythical creature. Right. If you're if you were a Native American back then mm. growing up in that era and you saw that shit, you'd be like, what the fuck? Right. You probably would worship it. You know what I mean? I would bow down to it, but I never thought it was anything else. It's one. Taylor just texted me and said it's half. It's half your one and a half salary after 22 years. I don't even know what the fuck that means. What's that mean? I have no half clue what Taylor's talking about right now. Yeah, I saw I saw that segment. I like you and Rogan together, man. I'm going to miss Rogan on, um, on YouTube. Yeah, I know. Because I'm not subscribing to Spotify. I don't have it. I just don't. But you don't have to subscribe. <laughs> you could just watch it. I think I don't it's free. download it. I don't have it on my phone. Uh, why? You don't fuck with Spotify. Go. You don't fuck with Spotify. I don't rock with Spotify. I got too much shit on my phone now. I got app. I got fucking iTunes. I got Title. I got iHeart. I got fucking Instagram. I just got too much shit now. Like the only reason I still catch Joe Budden podcast is because I watch the fucking YouTube clips. Right. right? And, I, and I don't even watch the whole episode. I just watch the clips. The clips. Yeah. So that's the thing. Rogan's gonna keep his clips on YouTube. The clips ain't going anywhere. Oh, the clips get to stay on YouTube. Yeah. 
Oh, because I thought that he had the because I thought Spotify had the new um video platform. They're gonna do video. The full episode video is gonna be on Spotify, but the clips are gonna still be on YouTube. And I think that's smart of Spotify because the clips are the advertisement. You know, you have the clips yeah, yeah, going yeah. out there, get everybody yeah. digest a little bit, a smaller version of it, and eventually you're like, oh, I gotta check out this podcast. I bet mad people listen to this podcast because they were watching clips of ours. No, I believe that. I totally believe that. I, uh, 100%. Hold on. Clips are like the longer version of like a meme. You know how like all the memes popped up after like a crazy interview you had, like all them Soldier Boy memes popped up, you know? And it's like, yeah. but a few people are gonna go, wait, what's this from? And then they're gonna watch the whole episode and they're like, oh shit, that's fire. And then you're going to do other interviews like, oh, I want to keep watching it. Yeah. I want to say, too, um, we're st- I guess we're still doing positively brilliant. What a fucking idiot. I'm going to be honest with you, man. I I might. We, we, we can. You got to build the pay? Uh, yeah. Blue Chew. You want to do that first? Yeah. Do Blue Chew and then we All come right. back. And Guys. We, and we do the deep, deep dive. This episode is brought to you by the hardest dicks on the planet. That's Blue Chew. Okay. I'm telling you, you're cooped up. You're inside, you're a shelter in place. You've been there for months. It's about to be ready. You're about to break out. That coronavirus turns out is not contagious if you don't have symptoms. So you're ready to go as long as you don't got the sniffles. You could taste, you could smell. You can go out there and you could deliver that D. Make sure that D is ready to go. Okay, the way you do it, blue chew. Simple as that, okay? Same active ingredients as in Viagra Cialis. Give your girl the night of her life. Give that new thing you've been talking to the night of her life. Ladies, you deserve the night of life. You get it for your man. And you know what? You can get it for free. <coughs> you go to bluechew.com. You pay $5 shipping. Use our promo code. That's all you got to do. Use our promo code, idiots, and you just pay that $5 shipping. You got the harder dick in your life. I'm telling you, this is not a game. It's not a game. Ladies, actually, you might have to be careful. Alex said it made his dick grow at least a quarter of an inch fact that's a fact okay so ladies you might have to be careful you might you might not have had any d in the last three months you might not be ready for some full blue chew that being said fellas go out there get it done bluechew.com make sure you use the promo code idiots and get it right okay let's get back to the show talk to us Charlotte. i mean listen um i'll be totally honest like i'm fucked up yeah i don't even uh i don't even i didn't want to do breakfast club this morning and I, and I I was looking forward to the podcast, you know, only because the podcast is um it is very therapeutic for me, only mm. because it's a big difference between, you know, the long form conversation that we have here and the uh, not so long conversation we have on the Breakfast Club. I just feel like I can express more of my my thoughts here. But mm. um yeah, if, if y'all don't know, we lost uh the first guest ever on the Brilliant Idiots podcast, literally the pilot episode, the mm. episode when you know, we like, all right, we're going to do a podcast. And, you know, Jazz Jazz Fly, Jasmine Waters was hanging out with me at the radio station like she used to do. She used to tend to do a lot when she was in New York. And was like, yo, we're going down the engine room to record. And she's like, all right, let's go. And it was called the Star Shame episode. Enterprise, the Star Shame Star Enterprise. Shame Enterprise episode. And, um, you know, yesterday about 1.30, I'm at the crib. I'm on the phone arguing with Van. I'm, I gotta start. I gotta stop arguing with Van. Every time I argue with Van, I always get the worst news. The last time me and me and Van debate a lot, mm. but when we're arguing, it's mm. just you know argument debate. When we're arguing, or maybe I'm not gonna say it's argument. This is a heated, heated debate. And I guess yesterday was kind of heated, not heated, heated. But last time was in February, and I got a text from this from Devi Dev, mm. and 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 Dev texted me to say no. Not Kobe. And Kobe Bryant died. I'm like, oh, shit. And yesterday I'm on the phone with Van and, and I get a text from Dev. Well, Dev called me and I didn't pick up. And then she texted me. She said, call me, 911. And then my wife hit me and was like, call Dev right now. And I'm like, oh, shit. What the fuck's going on? So I, I hit Dev. And Dev was like, are you sitting down? I'm like, yeah. And she's like, Jazz is no longer with us. I'm like, what are you, what are you, what are you talking about? Like jazz is no longer with us. Jazz is not here, and I'm just like, she's she's dead. I you you know you never get used to getting those kind of phone calls. Mm. You never get used to hearing that kind of news. Mm. But it's 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 never expected, right? Mm. You know when it just happens that way. You know, or when you get the news that way that fast, and it's just like, man, I'm fucked up. 
that was my homie, like in a real way, like like a real friend, like a person um I would call on whenever I needed advice. Person I would call on just to just to randomly talk talk shit shit with because Jazz Fly was absolutely one of the most intellectual people, one of the smartest people you would ever come across in your life. She literally mm. did not see the world the way other people saw the world. And mm. that's, I think, what made her such an amazing storyteller. And, you know, I was, I was blown away, not just by her, her art and her, her creative mind, but just her as a person. Like, I never met a person who always knew the right thing to say. Mm. Not only knew the right thing to say, could always give you the right strategy on how to move. Mm. And, when I th- and when I think about how she used to do it, she never was telling you anything. She was talking you through it almost like a therapist. Mm. And it's like she would even know the answer, but she would let you get to the answer yourself before she laid out exactly what it is you should be doing or how you should be doing mm. it. And I just, I just always thought she was so, 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 so dope for that. And man, you know, Talking to her mom this morning, talking to her pops, talking to her sister yesterday, talking to her brother. I'm just really sitting here and utter dis. No, I'm not in disbelief. I'm just fucked up. Mm. I haven't I haven't compartmentalized all of my feelings. Mm. And, and 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 it still really hasn't hit me yet. Are there are there any details about her death that are available? Um, none that I mean, none that I'm gonna give out. You know, okay. That's, that's 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 the family. That's the family's um. Yeah. That's the family's choice and decision on when they want to, you know, reveal the details of the situation. Yeah. But only thing I can tell y'all, man, is um, like always check on your strong friends. Always, right? And, mm. and don't just check on your strong friends. Strong friends, if you're the strong friend, which I which I know I, I am, but I have a lot of strong friends around me. Mm. Andrew, you're a strong friend. Mm. When you're a strong friend and somebody checks on you, be open to that check-in. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like you don't got to front for your people. You don't got to front for your mm. your family. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. When 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 things aren't you know going the way that they 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 should, or you don't feel like your life is where it needs to be. If somebody's giving you that check in, you you have to open up and, and and receive that, because you know you can't help anybody if they aren't receptive to the help. Why do you think it is that the strong friend often shuns the help that they're so ready to give? But they're the strong friend. Do they feel like they have to to like uphold an image? to their friends I or I don't think you, it's about image. I think it's about um when you're a strong person, a strong minded person, I think that um I think when you're a strong minded person, you don't ever want to admit to yourself that, that shit might not be the way you want it to be. You know what I'm saying? When you're a strong minded person, you may not accept the fact that you might be having a weak moment because that kind of like defeats the whole purpose of you being strong, right? It and attacks it, your identity in a way. It attacks your fucking identity. Yeah, and it makes you start questioning yourself. And then, you know, that's that's when the anxiety kicks in and that's when the mm. pressure might kick in and that's when the, the insecurities and you start questioning yourself and the, the low self-esteem kicks in and it's just like, I don't give a fuck how strong you are. We all have the opportunity and, and and we should all reserve the right to have to be weak. Hmm. There's nothing wrong with it. Like that's just life. In life, there's gonna be ebbs, there's gonna be flows, it's gonna be ups, it's gonna be downs. Hmm. There's gonna be moments when you're the strongest person in the room. There's gonna be moments when you're the weakest person in the room. It's gonna be moments when you're the person in the room with no fear. There's gonna be moments when you the person in the room with all the fear. Hmm. You, gotta, you gotta embrace it all. You have to embrace it all, man. You really, 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 really. That's why I be on everybody's ass about being as mentally healthy as possible. That's why I advocate, you know, for mental health the way that I do. I never considered myself a mental health advocate. I just was a person telling my story and I'm still telling my story because it's things that, you know, I, I, I have to deal with all the time. I, I'll be honest with you. Before hearing about the passing of jazz, I was so emotionally, mentally 
and spiritually exhausted. Gone? Exhausted. You said gone or good? Exhausted. Oh, exhausted. Exhausted. Yeah, I was so yep. spiritually, mentally, and emotionally exhausted. Mm. I don't know. I don't know if it was, you know, the the, the, the George Floyd situation. I don't know if it was the, just like how are we going to dismantle systemic racism. I just feel like it was a lot. Like it was real, real heavy. Like I sat in my basement on Saturday night. I had one glass of Casa Dragonis. I'm talking about like this much. I got halfway through that glass and I was listening to Jay-Z's um, title playlist. Uh, it's called Survival. Songs, the songs of survival. Mm. Crying my ass off for no reason. And I had a great week last week. Mm. My, I, had an, I had a great week. I had a phenomenal week. I had a great week at radio. Right. I had a great week you know, out there talking about the situation that's going on in the world. Right. I'm sitting in my crib. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at my TV and I'm just sitting there sad as fuck. Mm. And I just felt so drained mm. emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. I didn't know why. I even text, I text, I text, um, I text Nyla and I text Sim. I don't know why I don't know why I didn't text Taylor. Because we all on the same group chat. Hmm. Oh, I know why. I know why I didn't text Taylor. Why? Because because Wax Wax is on that group chat. <laughs> I didn't want. <laughs> so, that's why. That's what it was. Wax and Wax. I don't. You know, honestly, I didn't think Wax. I didn't think Wax, Michaela, and um, Taylor would have been sympathetic to me in that moment. Really? Seven, why? I, I don't know. I just I'm being with you. Y'all bullies. I didn't feel like being bullied. Y'all bullies. I didn't need to hear any jokes. So, I mean, don't do that. Don't I'm, being do honest. That. I'm being honest. I needed sympathy. I really needed sympathy. I was, I was having a very weak moment Saturday. Show me. I'm always sympathetic. You are, but a little joke. And, and I would I, listen, a little joke, with, a little levity would have been fine. You know? Like, Whatever, keep going. I don't know. So I, I just, I just, I text, I text him and Nyla, and I just said I'm sitting here crying my ass off, and Nyla gonna text back shrooms? <laughs> question marks. <laughs> I'm like, you know, fucking shrooms. I'm having a little drink, and I'm just thinking about life, and I was feeling that feeling going into Monday, going into Tuesday, mm. and then yesterday when I got that call, it was almost like. Aha. Uh-huh. That's what this was about. I've been feeling like this. I've been feeling like this since Saturday. Right. And, and this what this was about. Hmm. And, you know. It's, it's, it's I, I don't I'll say this. No, nah, I want to say I don't want to say too many details, but I, I it's, it's uh, yeah, I'm fucked up. Rest in peace, Jazz Fly. Hmm. I don't know how I'm going to get over this. To be totally honest with you. Not 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 this one. And. You know, we could talk about it a lot more later when, when, when more details of the situation come out. But yeah, man, she was a great soul, a great person, literally somebody in my circle that was ready for war at all times, mm. like, and always made so much goddamn sense that it, that, that, yeah, man. She was, um... She was incredibly fun to talk to because it felt like you were talking to someone who had it all figured out mm. and kind of understood everything. And uh, yeah, it was just, it was really pleasant to talk to her. I mean, you're talking about like, obviously all of our conversations were surrounding, you know, like Hollywood and like how the game works and what's happening there. But like, it felt like you were talking to someone who had like their ear to the door of all the crazy conversations that were going on. And I understand why you saw her as like a strong friend because you get comfort in talking to people who feel like they know exactly what's going on, especially when you're going through a time that could be chaotic. You don't know what's going on. You want some truth. You want some something with a strong foundation. And I keep wondering, like, when you said that about check on your strong friends, I'm like, do you think strong friends seem to know what's going on because not only what's going on in the world, but like what's going on emotionally because they felt it so deep. Wow. You know, like yeah, they make, could give that, that advice all the sense in the world, right? You know what I mean? Yeah, like they could give advice yeah. about you being sad or depressed, not because they haven't been sad or depressed, but they felt that shit probably on another level. You know what I mean? They've, they felt yeah. the lowest of the lows. So when you come to them with something low, they're like, nah, I know exactly what you're feeling. And this is how I dug myself the fuck out of this. So this is what you're going to do. 
it's like maybe they'd make great you know they have great advice yeah. for that reason i think you know um yeah that makes so much fucking sense yo because when you're the strong friend if you've been through something if you've had those experiences before then you've worked on but I, i'm sitting here wondering like did you work through them mm. because Sometimes, man, when you're the strong friend and you feel those things, you don't allow yourself to feel. You understand? Like, you don't want to feel that. Because if, if that shit makes you feel uncomfortable in the slightest or if it makes you feel weak in the slightest, you're like, yo, get that shit away from mm. me. I ain't weak. I'm the, I'm, I'm the strong friend. You get know what I'm saying? Like a, yeah. So I wonder if, um, if, if really what we call strong is oftentimes just numbness. And when that numbness wears off, which I think is something that's happening to um, a lot of people, a lot of people during this quarantine, yeah, because you know they don't have a lot of distractions that they had before. Sometimes you can bury yourself in your work, and you know, mm. you're always busy. You're busy. You're busy. You're busy. You're too busy to deal with mm. you know, what you got going on mentally and what you got going on emotionally. But man, when that noise stops, and when that music stops, and it's just you. Mm. You know, and yourself and you know all you got is that and, and 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 it's like that shit man that shit can drive some people fucking crazy yeah you know, like that shit can drive some people fucking crazy that's why i've been you know maybe i haven't been doing it enough but i feel like i i should have really been enc encouraging teletherapy i still should be encouraging teletherapy you know what i mean but right. i have i've been telling people guard their energy and you know make sure they stay mentally healthy during this quarantine time because it is, it is, man. When you, especially if you're alone, if you're alone and you got shit that you haven't dealt with, yeah, man, that shit, man. And then, and then also, man, looking at the world, you know, you look at the world and you know, on the news, twenty thousand people dead, thirty thousand people dead, forty thousand people dead, hundred thousand people dead, hundred thousand people dead. Like death is all around us. Then Ahmaud Arbery, then George Floyd. It's like, yo, man, how much fucking death y'all gonna show us? Like, yeah, I'm a stern, I'm, I'm a stern believer that. Your thoughts become things, right? Right. And the things that you want to happen in your life, you should constantly think about it. The things that you don't want to happen, you try not to think about it at all. But it's like literally for the past three months, four months, the, the, the one theme, the one common theme mm. that, is, that, is, that, that ties all of these shit together is death. Mm. Whether it's coronavirus, whether it's the protests, police protest, all of that, it's, it's all about death. It's about the loss of life, right? So it's just like, imagine if you just... Like sitting at home all day, and that's all you see. All you see. All you see. And by the way, think yo, yo, shows every big story this year has been centered around death. Mm. Before before Corona, what was it? Kobe. Kobe. Yeah. So it's like, yo, you we we we've been in a constant state of grief. We've been in a constant state of grief mm. all year long. And you, mm -hmm. I can even go back to Nipsey in April of last year, but we've been we've just mm -hmm. been in a constant state of grief. We've been in a constant state of people questioning their mortality in ways that they've never questioned their mortality. And, and sometimes, man, because I even go there sometimes, my mind literally does wander to that place of, is, is it more peaceful after this? Like, is that how you truly quiet the noise? You truly quiet the noise when, you're, when you no longer cease to exist physically. That's why it fucked me up when um I was having a conversation. I'm pretty sure it was with Dev, and Dev was telling me about this psychic. Who, it was with Dev. It was about this psychic who was telling this story about how she she saw Kobe and she saw Kobe when he when they when they died physically. He walked everybody into the afterlife, and he came back to look at the the the, the wreckage and, and and contemplate how did this happen? Why did this happen? And I'm sitting there thinking like. Wait a minute. I still got to be thinking about worldly issues after this. Mm. And then I went down this whole rabbit hole of um, people who had died for brief moments. Right. Like they died on the emergency table, emergency room table. Or they, they died in a car accident and they saw themselves on the side of the road and then they came back. And a lot of people believe I don't want to say scientists because I don't even remember who the fuck I was reading that was doing these studies. But they believe that your conscience still lives. So mm. even when you die, your conscience knows you died. Hmm. You you think so? I mean, that's what would be heaven, right? 
Yeah. That's that's that would be the afterlife. Your conscience would have to exist somewhere, whether it exists yeah. in heaven, space, whether it takes on another body. You know, I, I don't really know what happens. I don't think about what happens. I didn't see so much shit in my life now and seeing so much shit happen that I didn't think was gonna happen. This brain in our head, bro, one of the main reasons I keep stressing this mental health thing, that that brain can be your greatest gift and it can be your greatest curse. Bro. Because yeah. you have that, I, I, we, don't, we don't really truly know how the brain works. Bro, you know what's crazy? We were just talking about this yesterday. Alex had a crazy dream the other day, right? And he's telling us about the dream and I and then we all start sharing our like crazy dreams that we've had, right? It's crazy we don't have more anxiety going to bed at night, bro. Like every time we go to sleep, we don't know what the fuck is gonna happen. And whatever does happen, it is gonna feel real. Yeah. You know what I mean? That your parents die or God forbid in your fucking dream. It feels like they're dead. I had a dream where that shit happened. It feels like they're oh, fucking yeah. dead. And granted, we wake up from it. We're like, okay, phew, that's fine. But there's a lot going on in this head of ours. That's that, the key though. Say again? That's the key. The key, key to a dream is that you know you're going to wake up. But in the you know moment of it, you don't. Yeah, but I mean, I guess I guess going to bed at night isn't that scary because you know, hopefully, that's why you do your prayers. Now, nah, lay me down to sleep. I pray to the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before mm -hmm. I wake, I pray to the Lord my soul to take. At least you, in, in your in your heart or in your mind, you know you're gonna at least wake up. Like, and that is terrifying. You had those real bad dreams. Yeah, and you wake up sad as fuck. Yes, wake up. Yeah, I've had dreams that I've cheated on my wife and woke up and slapped myself. Because <laughs> you know how your wife would be like, if you even dream of cheating on me, I'm gonna fuck you up. Yeah, yeah. Let yeah, me go yeah. ahead and slap myself for it. <laughs> Last night the devil was trying me. All right. And but by the way, I'm gonna tell you something. This I like crazy. how you called it a dream, not a nightmare. It was a nightmare. I had a dream. And, 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 no, Andrew, it was not an Andrew. You're absolutely right. Thank you for correcting me, my brother. That was, was an absolute motherfucking nightmare. Okay? And you know how I know it was a nightmare? How? And how I know I'm a changed individual? How? I woke up terrified. Huh? I woke up t scared. Yeah. Feeling guilty. Whoa. Like, oh, shit. That was a fucking nightmare. That wasn't yeah. real. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But shit. Back in the day, I might have woke up with a smile on my face. <laughs> you got him. <laughs> <laughs> got him away with a freebie but, right there, man. Got him away with a freebie. <laughs> got him away with a freebie. So that's a freebie, though. Oh, if you man. cheat in your dream and you nut, if you have a wet dream, <laughs> you have a wet dream and you nut, that's a freebie. That's not cheating, bro. <laughs> Dude, that's the Lord you're stepping in, going, you. "Yo, you and need some way, size." By the way, that'll piss that will piss a woman off. Hell have yeah. a have a wet dream if you want to, and she wake up and see you with semen in your pants. What the fuck was you dreaming about, yeah. you baby? You got You lie. better be fast. You, you better be fast on the draw with that you baby. You hear me? You better be fast as fuck. You stutter just a little bit. It's gonna be consequences and repercussions. Oh fuck, dude. But yeah, man, I don't. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I hope to. Uh, yeah, I want to. I hope that we can. Um, Know, continue to honor the life of, of, of Jasmine Waters in a real way. Mm -hmm. And um, when her mother and father and, you know, sister and brother reveal more details and we can have a more deeper in-depth conversation because, you know, it's a lot going on in my mind right now. It's a lot going on in my mind, you know, as far as what I need to do with my life, as far as um, the calling. I feel like, you know, God has on my life and I'm gonna tell y'all right now, if y'all were ever tired of me talking about mental health, if y'all were ever <laughs> tired of me talking about anxiety, y'all are about to be fatigued like a motherfucker. <laughs> fatigued. Y'all gonna be fatigued. Not ever stopping because it is too many of us out here suffering in our communities, and it's too many of us that need help. And it is my life's goal and my life's work to provide those resources and provide those services for the people that need them. That is what, that is what makes me happy nowadays. Yep. That is what makes me feel fulfilled. Mm -hmm. That is what empowers me. And that's what makes me feel like uh, I failed in certain situations. Nah, you can never put that on yourself. That is not your responsibility. Someone else's life is not your responsibility unless it's your kids, you know? I don't know, man. Nah. I mean, I get it. I get what you're saying, but it's just hard. It's just hard to, you know, it's hard to feel that, you know, it's, it's hard. It's hard to feel that way at times. It's hard to feel that way. Yes. It really is. 
It really is. When you got friends and you got family and, you know, you know, people are, people are screaming for help in different ways and you know it and you try to provide it, but you can't really because that person won't let you accept it. Yeah. Shit is fucked up. It is fucked up, man. It's really fucked up. It's not, it's not, it's not a good feeling. Got any bills to pay? No, we paid them already. Oh, okay. Shit. But uh, yeah, man. I, honestly, it's important. Do we get out of this, or do we get out of this? It's important. That, I don't know. I mean, we'll figure it out. It's what we do. But it's uh, it's important that you recognize that you know that's not on you or anything like that. I mean, obviously, it's hard for us to, to discuss it without understanding or giving more context, and we'll leave that up to her family for sure. But um. But yeah, there's nothing that you can do in these situations. You know, you're a good friend. You did everything you can. Jazz had this one clip, man, when she was on Brilliant Idiots. And I want Taylor to add that when she was talking about the meaning of life. I can't speak for anybody else. I think for me, I it's about figuring out who I am. That's been my process. Um, and for me, it came from a surrender moment. And from there, it has been a 10 year journey or so since. Um, and I think that that's where I started to just sort of whittle away piece by piece. Oh, this is, I'm the person that like, I'm hard headed. I'm, they told me for years, don't touch the iron. And then when I was four, I walked into the iron and just laid my hand <laughs> on it and got three degree burns. Like I'm that person. So yeah. I'm the person that like needs to be, I need to figure out what I'm not in order to figure out who I am. And, and that's been a journey for me, but at the end of that was joy. Yeah, I mean, that should be the journey, right? Yeah. The journey, the journey is, you know, through all the turmoil, through all the confusion, through all the chaos, you know, finding the joy. Like I, I, told, um, I told Dev last night, I was like, yo, I want it all. You know, like I want all life has to offer. Mm -hmm. like, and, and when I say that, I'm not talking about the good. But that's just not the way life works. Mm. I want the bad, the so good. Because I don't believe in so-called good and so-called bad. I just mm. believe that life is just one long process. And we're all going along with the process. And you got to take everything that comes with it. I can't have a nationally syndicated morning show. Right. That's that's on in 100 markets, whatever. Like I had this dream of that. I can't have that without having the backlash that may come from a Rush Limbaugh interview or a Russell Simmons interview or, or anything that happens on Breakfast Club or has happened on Breakfast Club over the past 10 years. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm. that's what happens when you have a massive platform. Like people aren't going to believe you got things right all the time. So. You got to take that good with that bad. You got to take the, oh, we want Charlemagne off the radio. You got to take the petitions to get y'all. You got to take all of that. You know what I'm saying? You got to take the New York Times best-selling books, but then some of the people you may have spoken about in the book not liking what you said. But that's my experience. That's, mm -hmm. that's my life. So that's just the way the world works. So when I say I want it all, I want it all. I want the good, the so-called good, the so-called bad, the so-called ugly. I want to feel it. I want to feel everything. I want to be 85 years old, 90 years old, talking like being the real strong friend. Why do you think old people are the strong folks? Because mm. what'd you say? They've been through that shit already. Mm. They've had those experiences. They've had those emotional ups and downs. They've had the depression. They've had the anxiety. They've had all of that shit. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So I want to be that. So when I say I want it all, I mean all my years and every single experience life has to offer me. I bet you there's nobody. I bet you that's why when you look at Mike Tyson now, Mike Tyson seems so whole. Because he done had it all, lost it all. He done been through it all, had the depression, still deals with the anxiety. He done been the man, wasn't the man. Like, yo, I need... I want the fullness. If that's the fullness of life, if that's what life is offering me, that's, that's what life is giving me, I'm going to take it. I mm. want it all. I want it, I want it all. I really do. I want the whole, complete fullness of life. Because I feel like that, that is a part of it. It I is a part be of it. 
that guy sitting back having those conversations at 80, 90 years old, telling people like nothing phases me, nothing I haven't seen. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, uh, maybe happiness is a function of your expectations. And if you expect to experience the highs of lo and lows of life, then you can be happy through that. If you only expect to experience the highs, of course you're going to be miserable when the lows come. But if you're able to sit back and go, this is part of life. There are going to be tragic moments which touch me deeply. And there are also going to be incredibly happy moments which touch me deeply too. And that is the entirety of what life is. And if you can sit back and yeah. go, that's what I'm ready for. That's what I signed up for. And that's what the fuck I want. Yeah. Maybe it can help you get through tough moments like this because you recognize that there is no life experience without this. Nobody that gets to live a long life gets to live a long life without seeing their close friends die. Nobody. That's right. And maybe that's why you see so much wisdom in old folks because you're like, man, these people have literally watched all of their friends die. If you're old, old, right? You've watched all of the yeah. closest people that you know die and on some level be kind of like abandoned by even their family. As sad as that grandma, sounds. My grandma was the oldest child but her, she saw her mom die, her dad die, all her brothers and sisters. She had like, I think two brothers, two, two three brothers, two sisters. So she watched all her brothers and sisters die and her mom and dad die and her oldest son. My, my, I never met my uncle, but he was my oldest son. So she watched all of them die. and She died in 2006. So imagine that. And of course you got your grandkids and you still got your daughters, but I'm talking about your siblings. Literally, because you're the oldest child. So your baby brothers, baby sisters. I think she was the oldest. Maybe Uncle Ben was the oldest. I'm not sure, but I think she was the second oldest. I said, no, I think she was the oldest. Either way, you watched everybody around you pass. Yeah. That's, that, that can't be good. It really can't. It really, it's, it really can't be a good feeling. But, what, but it all. maybe you start to accept that this is part of life, man. Like I have... My dad's memory is gone, right? Like I introduce his short-term memory is gone. I introduce my girlfriend to my dad every single time they meet, okay? And I asked him about it. I was like, how does it feel like to have your memory start to go away? And he goes, this is part of life. He goes, I accept that this is part of life. As you get older, things start to break down. This is one of the things that start to break down. He goes, I've had a great life. I have... You know, two great kids that I love very much. I have an amazing wife who's still with me. I have so much, um, I have so much amazing things that have happened to me in my life. I've gotten so wildly lucky. And weirdly enough, he's like in this really great space as he enters this late stage in his life. And I think it's because of his expectations. He battled depression his whole life, sadness, anxiety, all these fucking things. But he has been a great person through it and he's always tried to help people and he found that. And... He's at this late stage in his life. I think he really is like, wow, man, this is part of it. I'm not angry and bitter. A lot of times when old people start losing their memory, they get angry and bitter. Why is this happening to me? Why is this doing? Why the fuck do I deserve it? And he's really taking it on like this is part of life and there's nothing you can do. So you might as well enjoy it. Yeah, enjoy. He found that joy. He found that joy that Jazz was talking about. He found that joy. That's it, man. I, I, I you have to, you have to see the... You have to see it for the entirety of things, man. You know, I bet Duval yeah. will be somebody really good to talk to at times like this. He has this amazing. I was speaking to him last night. What was he saying about it? Oh, first thing he said was, first thing he said was, that don't, don't even, before I even said anything, he's like, don't even do it to yourself. He knew. Nothing you, nothing you could do. Don't even do it to yourself. That's the first thing he said. That's yeah. like, that was literally the first thing he said. Only because, I mean, he knew, he knew how, I mean, everybody, anybody that know me know how I felt about jazz. Yes. Like, that's not a yes. secret. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's my, that's my girl. Like, So you feel a responsibility. You feel some sort of like, ah, how could I have changed things? How could I have done something different? And again, that isn't your responsibility. You know, you can't yeah, take yeah, credit yeah. for the bad things that have happened to her. You can't take credit for the good things either. You know, jazz accomplished all those good things by herself too. It's not to say that you weren't helpful and you didn't, you know, play uh, no, a part, no, I, but yeah, that's not... Yeah. I don't think about it like that. I just, you know, you just all you just always want to be there for your people. That's it. 
that's the, that's, that's literally the moral of the story. Hmm. Like, and and I feel that way about any of my my family or my friends. Like, when, when I embrace somebody, I embrace them in a real way. Like, hmm. I don't I don't have loose ends around me. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I embrace you and I'm like, it's my man, or this my girl, it's my family, like it's my friend. Like, I take that shit very serious. And the reason I take it serious is because I don't feel like I ever really had that growing up. I don't think I ever really had um, real friends, so to speak. I think I had a, I think I had a lot of associates. Okay. Growing up, you know what I mean? Um, I had a lot of associates. I think, I think the, I think the closest I had to having real friends was when I was living on Cozy Corner, and it was like me and uh, my man Reggie President. All the trotters, Charles, John, Ben, Thomas, when Thomas was around, you know. But it's like I really grew up with 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 those people, with Reggie, Charles, John, Ben. Like we was always around each other all the time. Mm. And I mean, I don't I you know, I I don't I don't speak to them at all anymore now. Not because I don't want to, it's just that you know, you you, you grow up and you lose touch. Ben still calls me though. Mm-hmm. I haven't talked to John or Charles in a while, but yeah, man. And then like like and like my, my man Booby, I love Booby. My dude Jarrell, Jarrell's dead. God bless the dead. My man Zeke. I had I had real partners. I I I did have real partners. Like, see, sometimes we tend to do that, right? Sometimes we tend to we let the bad experiences overshadow the good experience. Hundred mm-hmm. percent. So you know, so 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 sometimes you can be in that environment and you have a lot of people that backstabbed you or or did you dirty. And you kind of like cast a wide net. Like, mm. like think about how I started that off. Like I had no real friends. Like no, I did. I had real partners. I did have. I did have real partners. But you know, as I get older, I just I cherish my friends and my family a lot more. Okay, this is how I can say it. I know that I deal with a lot of people who, when I hear their stories, they feel like they didn't have the connection or the bond with their family the way that they wanted to. Okay. Are 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 they feel like they were the misfits. And for some strange reason, those are the people I, I tend to graduate, I tend to gravitate, gravitate to. Those are the people I tend to love. Those, those out of the box thinkers, those people who, you know, do move to the beat of their own drum in a real way. Cause to me, those are the most authentic people. Mm-hmm. I, I love polarizing people. I do. I love people that you can't figure out, you know? And when I meet those people, I really embrace them. Like, okay, this, this, you and me now. Mm. We got this, you know, and maybe it's my my nature, my cancer nature. I like to I do like the nurture. I do like to protect, you know, and you, when you feel like um, when you feel like you didn't do that, that shit is a fucked up feeling, bro. I'm not going to lie to you. It really, 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 truly is. So rest in peace, um, jazz fly. Uh, mist is not the word for you. And. I know that you have left a whole lot of written words somewhere. I know I, I, I am almost positive of that. So I'm sure that we will be blessed with a uh, jazz fly wisdom for years and years and years to come. And yo, she was only 39. Mm. I thought jazz fly was in her mid 40s not mm. because of her aesthetic or how she looked, but her wisdom. Way she, her wisdom yeah. and she was always so mis- like she I never I never asked her, her age. I never Yeah. I I just never thought about it. I just assumed Yeah. Jazz was a little old just yeah. because of her just the, the way she used to carry herself. She was like, mature in the way that she carried herself. Yeah. Certainly. Yeah. Yeah. 39, man. She'd have been this would have, October she'd have been 40. Yeah. It's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, man. It is tragic, dude. Yeah, I'm going to get the fuck out of here now. Not because I don't enjoy talking to you. Say again? I said, I'm going to get the fuck out of here now. Not because I don't enjoy talking to you. No, I don't take it personal. But just because I don't feel like talking. And I got to get ready for this. Uh, yeah, I had to do this Zoom call yesterday. Yo. Think, this is so crazy. I had to do this. And it was kind of good because it was filling. But it, like, I got, I got the call at 1.30. East Coast time about jazz. And we were supposed to start doing the podcast at 
one. And I don't even know why. I was, I was sitting on the couch doing nothing. And I was like, yo, let's start the podcast. What? What I said? 115 or some shit? Yeah, you asked for 130. 130. And so I'm just sitting there. And then literally I get this call. And I'm like, yo, what? The? Might have been like 120. And I'm like, yo, yeah. what the fuck? Did I hit you? I told you. I said, I'm going to think about doing it. And I was like, nah, I can't. Do yeah. I had to do. I had to do this um, this thing with Tony Robbins, and it was it was you know me and Tony Robbins and Van Jones and a, a few other you know great voices and I'm just I'm like I I wasn't even there with them yeah you know what I'm saying like I and I and I and I started the conversation of just having to let them know and you know tearing up and I'm like you know because the conversation was about what's going on in the world right now right. So for me, it just felt like trauma on top of trauma. Like we sitting around talking about traumatic experiences. Yeah. Now I'm just hearing about this, hearing about jazz fly. So that's more trauma. Mm. And it's just like, I was out of it. Yeah. I felt like that. We, I felt like that on the breakfast club this morning too. It's just like, I don't give a fuck about the shit we was talking about this morning. Yeah. I don't care. I don't give, when I say I don't give a shit, I don't give a shit. Yeah. Like if, like if, it, it just, I can't perform. I'm not a performer. I yeah. don't know how to perform. Yeah. I'm not I'm not the guy that can hear some shit and have some shit on his heart and his chest and just go out there and do my fucking job. No. Yeah. We got to we got to talk about this shit. I got to talk this shit out. I got to have a fucking conversation. Cuz if not, you know, there's no need for me to be here. So if you don't want to talk about this, I can't be here. Me, I can't, I, can't, I just can't do it. I really can't. And it's good, you know, you get the laughs and stuff and you feel good. Yeah. Then that laugh you be like, ha-ha, and then you be like, fuck. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, once again, rest in peace, Jazz Fly. Andrew, I love you. Love you, brother. Alex, I love you. Love you, brother. Taylor, I love you. Love you, too. Huggy Bear, Dwayne, I love you. <laughs> Huggy Bear. Chris, I want to tell Chris I love him, but Chris left us a while ago. Let's check on Chris, make sure Chris hasn't passed away. <laughs> it's been... It's been rough, man. It's been rough. <laughs> it's been a rough three years for LSN, man. I'm telling you, man. It's been a rough three years. Did you see that picture of Combat Jack and Jazz? Yeah, Jazz, yeah. That shit, that was three years ago. I know. Like or two and a half or something like that. Like I know, man. God that damn. Was birthday. That was at who birthday? Oh, uh, Combat's birthday. So what? Yeah. When was that? I think that was 2017 or 16. Come on, man. God damn, yo. Yeah. Like yeah, shit. We got to get off loudspeakers network quick, man. <laughs> <laughs> yo, yo, come on, yo. Come on. <laughs> hey, bro. Hey, bro. Yo, did I ever tell you about that time? I was in Toronto or Vancouver, and the dude said to me, man, this guy asked me a question. It was at a book sign, and he said, Do you ever think about Combat Jack and Tax Stone and think think you gonna be next. I looked up and said, nigga, no. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you? Nigga, no, I don't think about that type of shit. No, I don't. But I understand the question much better now. Right. I do. I totally right. understand the question much better now. You know, the question is the the the, the question really is just life. Mm-hmm. We don't know what life has planned for us. Mm-hmm. When you ask me a question like that, shit, we're all next at some point. Mm-hmm. Right? We mm-hmm. just hope that it's much, much later than sooner. That's fast. Well, we were just talking about this yesterday. What? Me, when we were talking about like dreams and stuff like that, I was telling him that like with all this stuff that's going on, I'm, I'm scared. I'd be scared to go to sleep sometimes. Just like just the mentioning what you were saying, just of constantly hearing about death. And then you put in perspective saying, we've really been hearing about it, the big news, for like six months now. And I didn't realize that until right now. And it's just, um, and it's a, not it. yeah, it's a specific type of death, right? Because it feels close to you guys, especially. You know, it's like, okay, here's this figure that died that we all look forward to. Then we see this police brutality and you're like, oh, those are just regular folks that could happen to me in that situation. And then one of your friends actually dies. It's like, it just keeps on getting closer and closer to your heart. It feels like. Absolutely, man. Yeah. Yeah, man. Wow. That's right on time. 
Salute the whole vein, man. God damn it. Say again? Vein just, I said, salute the whole vein. What happened? Vein just sent me a text. Like, literally, just, just sent this text. I appreciate you, Hov. I really, really do. Yeah, man. Y'all motherfuckers go to therapy, man. Go find you a grief counselor. Go find you a psychiatrist. Like, really, really, really invest in your mental health in a real way. I don't give a fuck what your six-pack look like. I don't give a fuck what your goddamn shoulders look like. If if, if everything ain't the way it's supposed to be up here in your brain, mm -hmm. it's, it can be very bad for you, man. Because, you know, I, I tell people all the time. Well, no, I'm not telling people all the time. I've just started saying this. Your brain can be your greatest gift and your greatest curse. Mm. Because the same thing that makes you genius is the same thing that can literally make you crazy. Yeah. And a lot of times, man, you know, life, life, like when you, if you're a comedian, yeah. if you're an author, if you're a writer, life is about storytelling. Yeah. Right. But sometimes the, the scariest story is the story you tell yourself. Bro, a fire can warm up a house or burn it down, man. Or it up. So Word you got to nurture that fire up there. It is a crazy thing, this brain that we got. Is a crazy thing that we, <laughs> I mean, you know, how crazy brain is we still can't figure out how it works. Yeah, like no it's so complicated, it so complex. Like we create this AI systems and they're not even close. They're really not even close. We have no clue what happens up there. We're at the mercy of it in a lot of ways. And I've seen it, you know, I've seen what happens when the brain takes over and makes you think that certain things are happening when they're not. So it's just Absolutely. take care of your brain, bro. Take care of yourself, man. Guard your energy, man. Protect your fucking neck. For real, for real. Yeah. Rest in peace, Jazz Fly, Jasmine Waters. We love you. Love you, Jazz. Uh, R.I.P. As always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. If you listen to this podcast and you think we're just a couple of idiots who don't know shit, you're right, too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening.